Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm going to be talking about how to write a critique or an edit letter, basically how to critique other people's writing. Writing critiques, I would actually say is a necessary skill for a writer, unless you are just a very casual hobbyist writer who is kind of just writing for yourself. If you are ever going to be expecting critique on your work from other people, then it's kind of just like a giving back to the community thing where you should also be able to provide critique. Critiquing other people's work is one of the best ways to improve in your own craft. I have a lot of critiquing experience. I've gone through university writing workshops, so I was just constantly critiquing work and writing edit letters and participating in workshops formally taught in that context how to critique work. Add my critiques graded in critique, worked as a freelance editor. It's something that I have quite a bit of background with. Let's talk about it. I have some tips that I hope will help. The first thing that I want to talk about is just you should have good etiquette. Be timely to something that should be discussed, but if you're gonna need more time than stated, make sure to communicate that. Don't share work that you're critiquing ever, 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 never do it. If someone trusts you to critique their work, that is for your eyes only. Just like be able to read the room, how formal or informal is this? Usually the more you get into a critiquing relationship with someone, you can be a bit more casual with my workshop group who I've been workshopping with them for so long, like so many years, we have such a comfortable rapport. We can joke around a little and be a little more casual. Jokes in the line edits, which is fun and I think as the writer it's really enjoyable to get critiques like that where you just have such a comfortable rapport with someone that they can joke around while also giving you really valuable feedback. In some cases it may be more formal so just kind of read the room. Let's get into some actual tips for writing a helpful and respectful edit letter. The first thing is just have the right mindset. Check your ego at the door. Good critique really needs to come from a genuine place of wanting to help the writer improve the piece. And not because you think you're a better writer, but just because you can look at it with fresh eyes and offer an outside perspective. It's a form of creative collaboration. It's not you telling the writer what to do or looking down on them because you're a better writer. Even if maybe you are a more experienced writer, sometimes there is a huge experience imbalance in these situations, but then it's even more important to check your ego. You were at that same stage at some point and if someone is a more beginner writer, what they just need is support and genuinely helpful critique. If there's any agenda, emotional agenda, if there's any desire to humble the writer, really, really obvious when there's an agenda and it's really, really obvious when it comes from a genuine place of wanting to just collaborate with you. I really dislike this idea that harsh feedback, harsh critique is better because it's more honest. You can be 100% honest while being 100% respectful. And I would say that if it's harsh, that's not necessarily honest. It invalidates your critique because if I get a critique like that from someone, which doesn't happen anymore because I always just exchange work with people that I have like positive working relationships with. But in the past when I was like in workshops and stuff, let's say I got a really mean critique where the person was just really rude. I actually don't know as the writer if these are genuine problems with the work or if you're just mean. I actually don't know if there's validity to this because it's not coming from an objective place. Once you start to be mean, disrespectful, rude, it's no longer objective. It's now subjective in tone and so for all I know it's subjective in content as well. As well, it's really important to remember, especially for a newer writer, a critique like that can turn them away from seeking critique or even from writing. It can be really, really damaging. As much as it's easy to say, oh well you should toughen up, not everyone is able to do that and um, a lot of writers are sensitive people. The writer may be young, may be new. Getting critique takes a lot of bravery and if you hit someone with a really harsh critique, it can really damage their confidence in a really lasting way. Good critique shouldn't be harsh to be effective. I would say that harsh critique is ineffective. It just needs to be smart and engaged. If the critique is objective and intelligent and perceptive and engaged with the work, shouldn't sound harsh or mean or rude, even if it's pointing out significant work that needs to be done. There's this idea that the worse the piece, the maybe the harsher the critique should be, not true. Let's say I'm editing a piece that I think is so strong and really just needs tiny touch-ups versus a piece that maybe needs significant work. The tone should be the same for both of them. And frankly, if the tone is mean, if it's rude, that's showing that you're not engaged with the work in a collaborative way. I personally, if I get that critique, I'm gonna go, I don't believe this is a good reading. I think you read this with a bad mindset. I think there's some ego here, some alternative motive, what has to do with your ego and it doesn't have to do with my work. And so why am I gonna 
think that any of this critique is valid. It's not coming from actual engagement with the work, and so I don't think it's a good reading. People who actually care about making your work better are going to do better, more thoughtful readings, they're going to engage with the work, they're going to be able to see it more objectively, not through their own subjective egotistical lens. A good critique, even if it's significant, should never sound harsh. I just, I really disagree with this idea that if a critique sounds positive and objective, that maybe means that the piece is better. Not tr true. I really rambled quite a lot throughout this video, so I just wanted to summarize this into a little TLDR. We really have to drop this idea that brutal critique is honest critique. Honest critiques are only brutal or rude if you're an asshole, honestly. Like, if you're a considerate, thoughtful person giving considerate, thoughtful feedback, your honesty shouldn't be mean. Honest critique will only feel brutal if it's coming from the wrong place. But if it's coming from a place of like objective analysis of the story and trying to help the writer, yes, an inexperienced writer may still have a hard time hearing that. It shouldn't be brutal or mean. Pretty much every single mean or re rude critique I've ever gotten was actually very surface level compared to the more respectful but insightful critiques I've gotten. Those ones actually helped me revise. No brutal critique has ever actually been helpful or provided any useful insight to my work or engaged with it in a meaningful way. Very often if someone has to be rude when they're giving critique, it's because they actually aren't engaging with the story in in a like insightful manner, maybe they don't even have the ability to, so they resort to rudeness maybe to make themselves feel smarter, which is an issue with their own insecurity. Meanness is not intelligence, meanness is not honesty. I've professionally edited, I've never lied to a client about the state of their work, I've never withheld issues with their work. Personally don't think that has ever resulted in a critique that was brutal in any way, because honest critique shouldn't be brutal unless you're being an ass, honestly. Remember that the writer is the expert on their own story. Your goal is to actually learn about the story from them, not teach them about their own story that they wrote. Both parties do need to be humble. Obviously the writer, you need to be humble to accept critique. You know, your reading of the story won't inherently be perfect. You can miss stuff, you can misread things, you can not pick up on a theme. That, that's okay, but you just have to be aware that this is your reading and this is what you're saying from your reading. Little note here, the tricky thing I think is striking this balance and understanding that everything you say is actually subjective because it is your subjective opinion but at the same time you're trying to be as objective as possible but i think when the opposite approach is taken that's when the critique becomes really unhelpful they're treating it as if it's objective fact when they're actually being very subjective i think that's quite frustrating and an unhelpful mindset but with the opposite approach where you understand that this is just your reading trying to be as objective as possible while still understanding that everything is through your own subjective lens i think that's when you take the healthiest approach to critique be mindful of where the writer is at what kind of feedback you should be giving you will probably critique differently for a beginner writer than a really advanced writer like the type of critique is probably going to be different in terms of the language you're using know your expertise in relation to the writer and the work if i'm critiquing for say a, pr a more advanced writer i'm not going to explain concepts to them whereas if i'm critiquing for like a more beginner writer I will try to make sure that I'm using language that is kind of at their level, not, you know, throwing out concepts that they may not know what they are, um, and maybe even providing necessary resources if possible. For a more advanced writer, if I were to do that, that would probably come across as really patronizing. Share your interpretations of the character and the themes. This is so helpful. As a writer, we often have this really intuitive connection to our work and maybe an intuitive understanding of what the theme or character arcs are, but having someone else share their interpretation of what the themes are, what the symbols are, what is the character's motives and goals and their internal world, like sharing just how you interpret those things is really, really helpful for a writer. It can put into words things that maybe the writer knew subconsciously but didn't know how to actually explain, because sometimes we view our work in such a complex way that's very intuitive and internal, that having someone look at it externally and be like, this is concretely what I took away from this, can be so beneficial in helping the writer see their work in actually a more like synthesized way, which can be hard to do when it's your own work. It came from that more intuitive place. So I would definitely recommend saying like, per my reading, this is a story about, you know, these themes or types of character arcs or character motives. That's really, really helpful to get a sense of how other readers are reading your character. And if it maybe aligns with what you were going for or doesn't align with what you were going for, or if it's maybe putting into words something that you didn't really know how to express. So I highly recommend doing that in a critique. Saying what your interpretations of what the character's goals and motivations are, that can be really, really helpful. Putting into words your interpretations of what the stakes are, what the conflict is, what this is a symbol for. Even if you think it's obvious and the writer probably knows, 
putting it into your own words can be really helpful and it can also show the writer what lens you're critiquing from if you say this is my interpretation of what the character's goals are the themes are the stakes are that shows the writer if you're now critiquing from the same kind of set up as they were intending. Now I'm getting into some topics on how to like actually phrase the critique. Don't tell the writer what's not working. Tell them how they can improve an aspect of the story. Give the reason. This is so important is to give the reason. Just saying this is bad is really, really unhelpful. Here is like a bad example of what not to do. I'm gonna do a bad, a less bad and a good. So a bad would just be to say the characters in this piece are really boring. That's how you read the characters. They were boring. Why did you feel that way? I have no idea. It's hard for me to know how to fix that. So here's a slightly less bad, but still bad example. The characterization in this piece is weak and needs a lot of work. I didn't feel connected to the characters because there was no backstory and they felt flat and had no goals. They don't feel like real people. So this gets into the reason, which is good. This isn't an unhelpful piece of critique, but it's not phrased in a very productive way and it could be phrased in a much more positive way while delivering the exact same piece of feedback. Let's rephrase this in a more like positive and objective feeling light. Characterization in this piece could be strengthened and a stronger connections with the character forged if their backstories were fleshed out and they were giving clearer goals within the piece. This would make the characters feel more real and alive since you would have more detail with which to view them as rounded people. So instead of saying this is bad and this is why it's bad, you're saying this is how it could be strengthened and how you could strengthen it, right? So it's just how you're framing the exact same critique. A very similar but kind of opposite technique is explain how the weaknesses are impeding the strengths. One of my university screen profs would always do this. I wasn't very good at screenwriting and so I was always nervous to have my scripts, you know, critiqued because I didn't feel very confident in screenwriting. But whenever he had a critique, he would always deliver it by saying one thing about the piece that was really good and why the weakness was kind of impeding that. For example, he would be like, the dialogue in this piece was so fun and so interesting and like there was so much movement to it, but as a result, the fact that there wasn't really any character movement in the end kind of fell flat because we had these really vivid characters on the page and we were expecting them to change by the end, but then you know, they didn't. He would be like, oh, if I if I fixed that, if I paid more attention to how the characters move from the beginning to the end, how they change, made the end more impactful, then I would really earn that great dialogue that apparently is working. So that's something that I think is a great way to also soften a critique, but in a way that is mindful of like how all pieces of the story intersect, which they all do. Like character structure, dialogue, like none of it is just standalone. It all does intersect. And this is a great way to be mindful of that. It's also really important to not critique the author's intention. You can share how you interpreted work and that's good. What you shouldn't be doing is critiquing what you think they were going for, or like what you think they were thinking. Your goal is to help the writer develop a piece, develop their vision, not to critique their vision for it. Critiquing their intention, I don't like that you're going for a story that is about these themes. Like you're not here to critique why they're writing the story. Um, unless you think there's like a genuine like offense happening here. Typically that's not really something that should be critiqued is the writer's intention. Like they have a vision for the piece, they have something that they're going for and that they're trying to create. You're not here to critique their vision, their intention, their goals for the piece. You're just here to give them some tools, an exterior viewpoint to help them develop that vision. One point that I missed in my outline that I just wanted to cover real quick is don't make assumptions about the writer's relationship to their work or accuse the writer saying stuff like, you're clearly too attached to this character or this character is clearly based on you or this character is clearly your favorite. This is clearly based on your personal experience or whatever. That's just not what we're commenting on in a critique. You're not supposed to be critiquing what you think the author's relationship to the story is, what their relationship to the characters are. Even stuff like, you clearly haven't done your research here. It's just a really rude way of phrasing things. If you feel like there's a, an incorrect fact, you could just say, I'm pretty sure, or like per my understanding, one good way to help get into this habit is to, when you're new to critiquing, not addressing it to a you. Talking about the work as if it almost doesn't have an author. In university and workshops, we were, we would never use each other's names. We would never say you, like we weren't talking to the author. We weren't like, you should do this. If the author came up, which you would avoid talking about the author as much as possible, you would say the author as if you don't know who they are. I don't really do that now as like an editor. I will speak to the author, but if you're new to it and you're worried about 
being too targeted in your tone, then really think about writing as if you found this work on the ground and it, it doesn't have an author. Just speak only about the work and never about the author. I would also just really avoid the words bad and good and avoid labeling things as bad and good. These are very subjective words. Show don't tell shows up in critique too. Instead of saying this was good, this was bad, describe why certain things are working or maybe need work. As a general rule, those are or similar words are to be avoided in a critique. They're so subjective. If you like something that's great, but why is it strong? Why is it working? Your personal tastes don't really have anything to do with the critique. The point of critique is not to judge the characters in the piece. The point of a critique is not to judge their actions, personalities, or beliefs. Maybe you don't like that a character made a certain choice. That is subjective. Let's say there's a scene where the main character is really rude to a service worker and you don't like this because you don't like it when people are mean to service workers, which is fair. I also hate it when people are rude to service workers. So this is something that in real life, I would be not pleased with this behavior. A very unuseful critique is to say, I don't like the scene where she's rude to the waiter. That's just judging the character's actions. But that's not a writing critique. That's not a critique of the writing. You could critique it if you said when she was rude to the waiter, I didn't understand what it was trying to convey about the character because it felt out of character with how she acts in the rest of the piece where she's very considerate. You can ask the writer, was there a reason why she was rude in that scene? This was a clarity issue for you of why she acted like that or it fell out of character. But the fact that you just didn't like that action is not a writing critique. Maybe you find the character just really frustrating and annoying, their personality bothers you. Saying, I didn't enjoy the story because the character's personality really bothered me. Not a helpful writing critique. When you're offering suggestions, you want to give the writer your analysis rather than tell them what they should do. You don't want to give them orders about what they should do. This is their story and they can do with it whatever they want. You can definitely give concrete suggestions of what you would maybe do in their situation. That can be really helpful to say, like if you're talking about the structure, your suggestion of how to maybe structure the piece. But it should be framed as a suggestion and not an order. A really forceful language that you would want to avoid. You have to work on the pacing because the story is too slow. That is not a constructive thing to say, just like you have to do this. Well, the writer can do whatever they want, actually. You have to respect their autonomy to edit the piece however they like. But you could give ideas on how to improve the pacing. You could talk about why you thought the pacing was too slow and why this was a detriment to the piece and how it could be improved. A really bad example to say like, this scene was boring and has to be cut. Well, does it have to be cut? Does anything have to be done? A good critique would explain the issues with the scene, why you felt it was extraneous or how it could be improved. Another really important thing to do is not to complain. Critique that reads as complaint is just really dejecting. So for example, stuff like I'm so fed up with the story or I don't even wanna keep reading or this is so painful to get through. Sometimes you're gonna critique pieces that you don't enjoy. That's not critique. Again, that is your subjective reading experience. You can maybe improve the reading experience of the piece by giving concrete objective su suggestions. But this is, again, it is subjective. That kind of phrasing, it has no place in a critique. When the writer is reading the critique, their takeaway shouldn't be, this person just didn't like the piece. Their takeaway should be, these are potential issues, maybe this is how I can address it. Instead of just correcting, if you're confused about something, ask the writer's intention. You never know what could be a clarity issue. So for example, let's say you read a sentence and you think the word choice doesn't make sense. You see a word and you don't understand what it is doing. Instead of just being like, wrong word, you don't know if it's the wrong word. That may have been the word they wanted to use. So you can leave a note that says something like, what was your intention with this word choice? I always hate it when I intentionally use a word and then people are like, use the wrong word here. And I'm like, no, you just didn't, don't know what that word means. I've had a lot of situations where someone read an image a different way than I would have wanted. They're like, well, based on what I'm thinking of the situation, it should have, that word doesn't make sense. And I'm like, no, that is the word that I wanted to use because that conveys what I want to convey. So instead of saying you use the wrong word here because it should be like this, say, what was your intention here? What were you trying to convey here? If it is the wrong word, then the writer will go, oh, I used the wrong word and they'll fix it. If that was the word that they meant, they'll realize that maybe the image was unclear. If you're doing line edits, you wanna be really mindful not to edit out the author's style. Line editing is an art. It is something that is a really beneficial part of critique, getting line edits. Getting good line edits changed my writing. What you really wanna be mindful of is to not edit out the author's style. If you're like completely rewriting sentences, explain 
why in university this would happen a lot some people would be so aggressive rather than leaving a note that's like you know i think this descriptive paragraph is maybe too dense they would just cross out huge blocks of description it can be so beneficial to get like a really detailed line in it but you have to be really careful that you're editing for their style not editing for your style kind of touched on this in the beginning but just like leave yourself out of it this edit is not about you you can share your perspective and there are definitely times and this is kind of up to discretion when Sometimes I'll say my reading, in my opinion, sometimes I'll say that if I feel like I am sharing what is a more subjective point, even though I usually try to be as objective as possible in line edits and just completely leave my taste out of it, because an edit, it is not about my taste. It is not a matter of my personal reading tastes and what I like. If you're a good editor and you have like experience editing, you get good at seeing strong writing completely separate from your own taste, but that can be hard and that can take time. A critique shouldn't feel self-congratulatory. It shouldn't be the, the critiquer being so proud that they found so many things wrong. Like such a pet peeve of mine when people critique my work and they're like, oh my god, I'm so proud that I found so many things wrong with it. That's so weird to say, like you were just looking for things to be bad because you wanted to feel smarter than me. I've touched on this throughout, but just literally be a nice, respectful person who leaves your ego and your tastes out of it. Be as objective as possible. That is the most helpful type of critique in terms of giving someone actionable, objective feedback that they can actually use to make their work better, that they feel empowered by. I've had the whole range of critiques in my life. I've had really, really bad, and I've had really really good. The best critiques I've ever gotten, the ones that made me feel really empowered and excited to go edit the piece, it wasn't because they're just nice. So you should absolutely share what is working with a piece and I didn't even say this in the video because it's obvious. The writer needs that touchstone of what's working in order to edit around it. The best critiques I've ever gotten are actually usually the most in-depth. When someone does that really deep thoughtful reading and you can tell that they care, they want this piece to be better, those kinds of critiques feel great to get. Easy to think that the critiques that leave you feeling great are the ones that have a higher ratio of praise to critique, but that's really not it. It's if you can feel that genuine enthusiasm and engagement with the piece, those are the best critiques I've ever gotten. Even if a lot of the time they had way more and way more detailed discussion of the things that could be improved. You can really make a really positive impact on someone in their writing journey if you do that careful, thoughtful reading and really engage with their work in a kind of a selfless way. So know that when you're doing critique, you can have a really big impact on a writer positively, but if you handle it the wrong way, it can be a really negative experience that can affect them for maybe a while especially for a newer writer like, know like the responsibility that you have to the author come at it from a selfless perspective of i want to help you develop this piece you have the right mindset going in that's really the best thing so those are some tips on how to write a really strong critique i'm gonna write up an example of a critique on just a made-up story so you can kind of see an example of what i think a really strong edit letter looks like that will be linked in the description if you want to check out this longer written example. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye!